Our sign language interpreter tonight is Marisha Awiti. Let's begin with the Kenyan Opposition Coalition. Court is insisting that the National Electoral Commissioners have lost credibility to supervise the next polls and should either voluntarily quit before the 2017 elections or be forced out. The three court core principles have threatened that the opposition will boycott the next polls if far-reaching electoral reforms are not implemented ahead of the polls. The pressure for IABC commissioners to go home comes a day after the umbrella body of charters NCCK, NCCK I beg your pardon, demanded for electoral reforms and national dialogue on reconciliation ahead of the next polls. Patrick Amimo kicks off our bulletin tonight to that report. At the historic Kamukunji grounds in Nairobi is where code leader Raila Odinga led code core principles Kalonzo Musioka and Moses Wetangula and other leaders allied to the opposition to push their demand to have a new set of electoral commissioners to supervise the next polls which are 15 months ahead. On Friday, the umbrella board of churches, NCCK, demanded that IBC commissioners should leave office because they had lost credibility to supervise the next polls. The opposition supports the churches. Tume ya uchaguzi ni lipari. Timu iko jubili, iko kwa. Timu ya juu ya kwa ya ya kwa ni mekata lipari. Ata miongozi wa kanisa, mekata lipari. Asili ya sabini ya Kenya, mekata lipari. Kwa wewe ni nani binani, kwa wewe ni nani misha, kwa wewe ni pari kenya hii. Wao kama ni wazelendo wa Kenya by Monday wajiuzulu. Last kama si hivyo tunaenda sisi kule tukaoliza maswali mtaondoka lini. We cannot and we will not accept to have a referee in whose we in whom we have no faith. Kama ai bizi awaondoki katika ofisi, hatuta enda kwa uchaguzi and we are capable of stopping this country from going to election. The opposition leaders say they will occupy the electoral body's offices to ensure the commissioners leave office. They are also pushing for a national dialogue to discuss and find solution to ills bedeviling the country. Sisi ni wangwana, tuko tiyari kukwete chini, tuzumuze. Ili kutaendelea mbele kenya hii Tungeji ya tume uchaguzi Mili tunajabishwa Nani ya takuwa pali Kama tiyanda mbele We must have reforms within IEBC Without reforms in IEBC Then the election of 2017 counts for nothing All Kenyans lazima tuseme No reforms, no elections Nana Mwamba Hassan, he should hang his boots as high as those boots on the electric power line. Nata hako wana puti Hassan, kule juu vile, ila vya tumili nyo kwa pale juu. Speaking on the same platform, following widespread reports of an imminent split, leaders assured supporters that the code that binds them is very strong. Wame sema the code ito samba ratika. Na wambia mwoho. Raila,我也打，那卡隆佐，我们是看，我们怕，我们是。Kodi wanaaminiana na kwa hivyo nauliza wenzetu ambao wako nyuma yetu wasijaribu kuvuta kalonzo kando hii na uraila kando hile na wetango la kando hile The opposition wants President Uhuru Kenyatta to make public the truth Justice and Reconciliation Commission report and assure justice for the 2007 post-election violence victims They also accused Attorney General Professor Gidu Muigai of misleading the president when he said the government will not hand over three Kenyans sought by the Hague-based International Criminal Court for obstructing justice. Mambo itaisha na itaisha mpaka tuena through justice and reconciliation. The opposition accused the government of increasing Kenya's debt burden and giving lip service to the war on graft. Kama zio kod. Nana ngejo ile wizi lifanyeka kwa NYS 
Kwa hivyo mjue sisi hatuko kwa mamlaka wakati huu lakini sisi ndiyo tunaongoza. Kwa sababu bila sisi Kenya ingekuwa imeuzwa kabisa na kuisha. The core leadership has promised that on Monday it will mobilize its supporters to go to the IABC and pile pressure to ensure that the commissioners go home. Patrick Amimo, KTN News, Kamukunji Grounds, Nairobi. And on the same note, Deputy President William Ruto says calls by the opposition leaders for the disbandment of the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, IEBC, is tantamount to a coup against the Constitution. He says both IEBC and the Supreme Court of Kenya are institutions created and anchored in the Constitution, which cannot be easily di uh, disbanded. Duncan Hayamba now reports on what looks like Jubilee taking on the opposition head on. The ruling Jubilee Alliance seems to have decided it's time to give the opposition response in what clearly appears to be an all-out political war between the two coalitions. As court schemes to storm IEBC and call for the removal of its commissioners, the deputy president says their calls are tantamount to guerrilla tactics. <laughs> Tukawa na IBC kule ndani, tukawa na bunge kule ndani, tukawa na senate kule ndani, tukawa na supreme court kule ndani. Hatuwezi kuenda kwa baraza ama kwa press conference tuseme ya kwamba tunataka institution hii itolewe, institution hii ele itolewe. That is a coup against the constitution. If you want to change anything in the constitution, follow the constitution. It has mechanisms. On Eurobond queries, the government is accusing the opposition of engaging in a cat and mouse game, having refused to meet Treasury CS Henry Rotich on grounds that he was a junior civil servant, only to go for the CBK governor who is more junior than the CS. They are basic, reckless, economic saboteurs. They, they are not interested in any truth. Kwa sababu, kama wangekua natavuta ukweli, wangekuwa ameenda kwa waziri Rotich na Rotich angekuwa amewapatia vitabu ya serikali sio kwenda kumangamanga kwa bank Jubilee MPs who accompanied Ruto to Old Jororok in Nyandarwa County for a fundraiser to buy five buses for schools in the area claim code leader Raila Odinga's Raibu, latest Raibu. onslaught and Raila outburst Raibu. against the government is a sign of panic ahead of next year's general election Ebu angalie ile kazi wamefanya kama wamefungwa mkono moja na ufikirie saa hii tunaenda wapi wakati wamefunguliwa mikono hawa watu watajificha kwa mashimo kwa sababu pale tunaenda sio mchezo so they need to rearrange themselves otherwise inasema ile 50 plus 1 itakuja kuwa 80 plus 1 if they are not careful and i am giving them free advice Later on, Ruto flew to Kitui County for another political meeting which comes barely a week after political leaders from Kitui County paid President Uhuru Kenyatta a visit at State House Nairobi. Duncan Hemba, KTN News. The head of state summit and the Northern Corridor Integration Projects Conference held in Uganda today provided fertile ground for President Uhuru Kenyatta to once again touch base with his Ugandan counterpart, Yoweri Museveni, in a bid to have Uganda's oil pipeline pass through Kenya. But is President Kenyatta engaging in a futile quest over the pipeline issue? Well, KTN's Timothy Etienne explores. President Uhuru Kenyatta's departure from the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport for a Heads of State Summit and his subsequent arrival in Uganda Saturday mid-morning was a trip loaded with diplomatic intent to have matters crude oil that have been plaguing the two nations sorted once and for all. The heads of state meeting during the 13th Northern Corridor Integration Project Summit at Uganda's Peck Resort in Munyonyo, a summit that interestingly Tanzania, the third party in the crude oil pipeline row, is not a signatory to. The summit only attracting leaders from Rwanda, Uganda, Kenya, South Sudan and Ethiopia but one that prompted Uganda leader Yoweri Museveni to once again declare his stand that the country's crude oil pipeline would be passing through the Tanga port in Tanzania. And Uganda is set really to take off because the, the base is now there. 
His decision, believed to have been made after a consultative meeting with technocrats from both Kenya and Uganda, even though the contents of the report sanctioned by President Uhuru Kenyatta and Yoweri Museveni remains unannounced. The initial deal negotiated mid last year should have seen Uganda's crude oil pipeline pass through Kenya with construction beginning at Hoima district in Uganda and leading all the way to Lokicha in Turkana ending up at the port of Lamu for exportation, a length of 1,476 kilometers. But concerns raised by France-based company Total on insecurity, as well as land compensation issues in Kenya, prompted Ugandan authorities to opt for the Tanzania route in a deal believed to have been crafted in October last year. The deal will have the pipeline pass from Hoima in Uganda all the way to the port of Tanga in Tanzania, a longer distance than that of Kenya, but one Tanzanian authorities believe will have the pipeline constructed faster than if the pipeline passed through Kenya. <laughs> Uganda's discovery of some 6.5 billion barrels worth of oil with between 1.2 and 1.7 billion barrels recoverable has seen both Kenya and Tanzania engage in intense diplomatic lobbying to have the 400 billion shilling crude oil pipeline project pass through their country. The heads of state stressed the need to implement the projects with a sense of urgency and resolve and resolve outstanding issues by the 14th summit. Kenya's route seemingly abandoned in a diplomatic standoff that could see Kenya lose up to 15,000 job positions if construction was to begin at Lamu. Timothy Otieno, KTN News. Wildlife conservationist stakeholders in Kenya have officially launched an online campaign in support of the impending ivory burn on April the 30th. The campaign brought together, among other dignitaries, the U.S. Ambassador to Kenya, Kenyan Environment Cabinet Secretary, as well as the Canadian High Commissioner. The campaign acts as a prelude to the event where 106 tons of ivory and rhino horns will be set ablaze as a message to poachers on Kenya's commitment to end ivory trade. As Kenya prepares for the biggest ever ivory and rhino horn burning, stakeholders in the wildlife, tourism and environmental conservation circles stepped up the anti-poaching crusade on the online platform. The campaign under the hashtags Light a Fire, Worth More Alive and Tweet for Elephants was immediately set off at the World Wildlife Foundation headquarters in Nairobi. The site where they are building the ivory burn pyres and it is such an extraordinarily powerful thing to stand there next to these tusks and to think that for every two of these tusks there's a dead elephant. There's an elephant that in many instances was killed by a poacher and the cost, the cost of that and the sadness of it. The online campaign acts as a prelude to the April 30th ivory ban, the biggest ever in history with one or six tons of the prize horns going up in flames. And this should send a clear message to poachers. From um, historical um, evidence, we believe that selling it will actually put our animals more at risk than they currently are. So we believe that the only way to really um, uh, ensure the survival of our species is actually to destroy the stockpiles we have and push for a total ban. The campaign is also spearheaded by the Giants Club Summit, an environmental conservation organization bringing together eminent world personalities in the fight against poaching. What we're doing is we're going upwards and outwards. Um, in many cases, um, with, with summits and there's some, been some fantastic work that's come out of them, um, we're preaching to the converted. And what we're trying to do here is elevate it to the highest political level because we know if that the leaders of these countries take decisive action, we will see that action in practice, and bring them out more widely to the key decision makers. Rhinos are famed for being among the few animals with parallel horns, while elephants are renowned for opening up the thick bush to other herbivores. Latest poaching figures from the International Fund for Animal Welfare indicate that 100 elephants are killed daily across the world, with four rhinos falling prey to poachers. Besides tourism, these mega herbivores are considered an important component of the ecosystem across the world. 
the April 30th ban will be presided over by Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta. Mark Namaswa, KTN News. We're glad you're watching Weekend Prime. We just want to bring you what to expect on the standard on Sunday tomorrow, the 24th of April. As you can see there, the big headline, the showdown continues, called and Jubilee wrestle over the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission. And a quote here by the uh, Deputy President William Ruto saying, IABC can't be disbanded in press conferences and uh, public rallies. Court won't threaten us. We will defeat them. So you definitely want to grab yourself a copy of the paper tomorrow including this story by Ali Jama, who's talking about men out there. Beware that small swelling could be a symptom of a penile cancer. So definitely that and many more stories that will be in your copy of The Standard on Sunday. Stay with us. We'll be back with sports and other news making headlines today. A deadly trend in Kilifi that has left the old worried. Welcome back to Weekend Prime. Now, despite several initiatives and campaigns mounted to curb the lynching of the grey-haired elderly people accused of practicing witchcraft in Kilifi, the killings still rage on. At least two senior citizens are killed in Kilifi County every month in an appalling state of affairs that has now led to the creation of rescue centers for their refuge. But even as the subject remains intricate and controversial in the Kenyan domain, it is emerging that the killings could be engineered by unresolved generational land conflict and interests in the county. KTN's Coast reporter Francis Ontomwa reports. When a close neighbor died at Bungale village in Kilefi some five years ago, the rural village was up in arms against this man, blamed for invoking dark forces and causing the death. Bayacharo today walks feebly engaged in his favorite pastime of weaving baskets, age and controversies clearly taking a toll. And all the time and settled at this center, named after iconic Mijik and leader Mekatili Luamenza. He's among tens of elderly people who have fled their villages to seek refuge. It is no longer safe to stay in the village. People are talking here. Wakanika Tapa, Nahapa, Nahapa. The deadly onslaught left the grandfather of several children reeling from the experience. Several signs, injuries strewn across his body. Some that have now become permanent, a reminder of the escape from death. Those who have attacked him were his own children and grandchildren, he tells me. He's still scared and not ready to go back to the village. Despite several initiatives mounted to challenge the warped belief, the Malindi District Cultural Resource Center says at least one elderly person is either killed or injured every week in Kilifi for allegedly practicing witchcraft. Most of the time happening during burial ceremonies in the village. Ganze, Kaloleni, Rabai, Kilifi North and South, Malindi and Magarini branded the hotspots. But people don't really understand. They're saying, oh, you know, it's witchcraft, but really there's another motivation. You know, so for that to happen, you've got to be able to talk with both groups of people. You have to work with both groups of people to understand, you know, what's happened, but also how will they be affected by the change. And having white hair does not mean that you're an evil person or you're practicing witchcraft. Many communities living at the coast of Kenya attest to the existence of dark forces. These incidents that occurred last year at Mombasa's Kiembeni estate left many speechless and confounded. And if that wasn't controversial enough, there was this one. A desperate cat was trapped in a jerrican with superstition poured in plenty with some wanting to lynch it. Activists against the vice say property inheritance and land conflicts among the top reasons why these men and women get targeted under the guise of being punished for witchcraft. And they keep blaming the justice system for not being so rational. Atupati msada kutoka kwa sikali yetu wa county, atupati msada kwa mashirika ya kujitegemea, pia atupati msada katika eh, madhehebu ya dini. Na sababu ni kwamba labda hili swala la uchawi lina... lina for now, although squeezed for space, 
They called this home, and here they feel much safer. This rescue center began a few years ago in honor of freedom fighter Mekatilili Wamenza. But years later, it has turned out to be a rescue center for tens of elderly people who keep streaming in here for fear of their lives. Francis Ontomwa, KTN News, Kilifi. Just how many lions are in the country? KWS is finding the answer. Welcome back to Weekend Prime. Now it is said that there are 2,000 lions left in Kenya. Meru National Park has been renowned as a lion stronghold. But just how many lions remain in the park? Well, this year the Kenya Wildlife Service and other stakeholders conducted the first ever lion census of its magnitude in the expansive park. Take a look. Buffaloes are not easy prey. They know the smell of lions and are not afraid to fight back when hunted. Lions know the scent of buffaloes and their sound in distress. But in the night, big cats have an advantage. Here, at the expansive Meru National Park, this is how the early year carnival and specifically lion senses began, employing the recognized and widely used callback method to lure the lion to come out and hunt, then count them. But if the lions are not hungry, they will not respond. That's the boon of this method. Working closely with Meru KWS officers and representatives, conservation experts and scientists, the Born Free Foundation conducted a successful calibration exercise, which gave the basis for choosing a radius of 2.5 kilometers for each of the 37 callback stations in the 870 square kilometer park. Each station was first split into two groups. One group searched for lions, while the other group was stationed five kilometers away, playing the callback sound. Each group with a lead scout, a scientist, and security personnel. The necessary equipment, night vision gadgets, powerful flashlights, and the callback speakers. You call for five minutes, wait in silence for five minutes, and scan the surrounding area with powerful spotlights. This exercise is repeated three times at each of the stations. Victor Mutuma, born freak official leading one group, noted that at that distance, his group could not see any reaction from the lions being observed. So the callback equipment was moved closer. His group spotted four lions, seven hyenas, two leopards, and three giraffes, and many buffaloes. At one point, when the callback was played for barely 30 seconds, a huge herd of buffaloes charged toward one group's vehicle, clearly getting the chilling message and moving in to save one of their own. For the other groups, apart from a lioness that was feasting on babu remains, most of the other lions reacted to the callback at 2.5 kilometers. Meru Park senior scientist Geoffrey Bundetich has since confirmed that lions in Meru respond at 2.5 kilometers. This, however, is specific to the equipment used and the wind speed. After three grueling and nearly restless nights assessing the results and comparison with other methods such as the sport transect method, the findings established Meru's count of lions at 60. Before, the range stood at 40 to 60, but there was hardly any baseline data available in the lion population, general lion pride composition and distribution in the park, thus the need for a lion survey. This is the first census of this magnitude in this park. Last year, none was done, just sightings of one or two prides. In fact, what we also plan to do is, um, is uh, to collar some, to put some radio collars on certain prides that we've identified and monitor those prides. <laughs> Counting carnivores must be done for meaningful conservation. Globally, in reserves and parks, lion numbers have gone down drastically. National Geographic estimates that in just 50 years, lions have gone down from 450,000 to just 20,000 in the world. In Kenya, 2,000 are left. The onslaught continues, lions being hunted down, poisoned and boxed in, in limited territory. Uh, why we are doing this is uh, uh, carnivores. Population have gone down significantly, globally, and also in Africa and in Kenya in particular. This will save the carnivores. This is really the hope for carnivores. Counting lions is not like counting people. A number like 60 may not tell the whole story, but this is the baseline data for conservation, not just for Meru National Park, but for the bloodlines of many other prides of lions. Dorka Swangira, KTN News, Meru County. <laughs> 
Now talk sports and begin with some good news for my new fans who tonight are celebrating beating Everton 2-1 at Wembley. Now to other news, the final day of the Police Service Athletics Championship. So big names registering good results with Asbel Kiprop winning gold in the 1500 meters race. Julius Yego extended his dominance in the country as he won gold in javelin with ease. The Kenya Police Service Athletics Championships entered its third and final day on Saturday at Kasarani with a rich field of several Olympics and world champions participating. Vincent Yator continued his success by winning both the 5,000 meters and 10,000 meters races. Yator unleashed a last minute kick as he collected his second police title in 13 minutes, 43.09 seconds. What I'm focusing now in Oregon. Oregon, Prefontein, in America, next month. The women's 5,000 meters and 1,500 meters was a contest pitting Janet Kisa, world championship finalist, and Margaret Chelimo. Kisa led the field fast across the line in 16 minutes, 28.8 seconds, as Chelimo managed second in 16 minutes, 31.3 seconds. As Belki Prop won the 1,500 meters finals in a time of 3 minutes, 40.2 seconds, ahead of Abednego Chesebe. Looking forward to opening the league um, in a good way and, and also hoping to have a good season. Javelin maestro Julius Yego claimed goal with a 78.29 meters throw, opening a 14 meter margin between him and second place Fred Kogo, who won silver. For the level of, of competition to improve, we need people to have a very good training, you know, really focus, and uh, that's the main thing. Most athletes are using the championship as preparations ahead of the Summer Olympics to be held in August. Abula Ahmed, KTN Sports. Kenyans are expected to star on the 35th edition of the London Marathon, which will take place tomorrow. Defending champion Eliud Kipchoge is widely expected to retain his crown, but he will have to beat competition from world marathon record holder Dennis Kimeto and 2014 London Marathon winner Wilson Kipsang, as well as fellow countryman Stanley B. Watt. Ethiopia's Kenanisa Bekele is among the athletes also expected to give Kenyans a run for their money. In the ladies' races, Ethiopia's Tugista two Far will renew her rivalry with Kenya's Mary Kay Tani and Florence Kiplagat. Right, what do you want? That's the only, above all, that's uh, the only metal I don't have in my, in my neck. And if I, I could cut a position to be in the team for Rio and cut a gold medal, then I will really more than happy. dropped mostly because of the rise in the number of women who choose to deliver in hospitals rather than at home and with no skilled help as well. Turkana County is one of the areas that has for a long time recorded high maternal and infant mortality and just what is the progress there? Our health reporter Sharon Mamani was in the county and now report on the move from harmful cultural delivery practices that has seen many lives of women and children saved in the county. So thank you so much for uh, joining us tonight uh, on the bulletin. We'll leave you with that feature from Sharon Momani. Keep your thoughts coming through to KTN Kenya at Sofia Wanuna at KTN News. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. God bless you and then take care.